What's up guys? So in today's perfumery basics video, I want to kind of discuss some of the thought processes that go into my head before I even start blending a new perfume. So some of the tips and tricks that I've kind of learned along the way that I'm going to spread uh, this knowledge to you guys because I know a lot of newbies, a lot of newcomers, a lot of new perfumers kind of don't understand some of the concepts of like how to start a blend like what do I do uh, there's so many different concepts to, to blend like some people say oh you should always start with building the base notes first then work on the mids then the top or maybe just work on everything together or vice versa and there's no really wrong way to go about it but I've kind of learned a couple of things that helped me along the way which I'll share with you guys Okay, so the first thing you wanna gonna do is obviously you wanna have a theme in mind before you start blending any fragrance. It's a, a fragrance theme, and I've discussed this in some of my past videos. So a fragrance theme is one, uh, what's the fragrance kind of seasonality? Is it gonna be meant to be worn all year round? Is it a warm winter fragrance? Is it a bright citrusy summer fragrance? Uh, you want to figure out who your gender demographic is. Is it for intended for a men's fragrance? Is it a female? Is it unisex for everyone? Uh, and then of course you want to kind of think about age range. Is this a, a young, playful, sweet scent? Is this an older, mature, sophisticated scent? So when you have all these things in mind, uh, this is the first concept phase of your fragrance theme. Okay, so step two is once you figure out what your theme is, the next step now is who are gonna be my key players in this fragrance? And what I mean by key players is not necessarily start going through your entire stash of oils and aroma chemicals and ingredients. It's more of a concept phase of, okay, I've got my theme down. Now I wanna figure out what are some of the scent bubbles that I want to portray in this fragrance? So what I mean by scent bubbles is usually any fragrance that you purchase or you've ever smelled, when you initially spray it, you usually get two to three initial visualizations or scents that come to you or come across to you first. Um, sometimes you'll smell something and you'll be like, oh, I, I get a ton of bergamot, I definitely get a lot of musk, and I definitely get a lot of leather. Like that's three things right off the bat you smell from one fragrance. Or another fragrance be like, oh, this is so spicy, but at the same time I get a lot of vanilla, and I'm getting some pear or some fruits, and that's three things. Like so, now you want to kind of figure in this phase, who are going to be my star players in this fragrance? This doesn't mean pick out, you know, 20 different things. You want to pick out your, your key players in this thing. Uh, and what I usually like to do is I like to pick out one to two key players per evaporation curve. So what I mean by that is evaporation curve to me is the same concept to you guys as top, middle, and base notes. So a quick evaporation curve is top notes. That's something that you apply to skin and it evaporates rather quickly. It's on your skin probably less than an hour. Uh, obviously middle, middle notes are a little bit more long tail. They'll last, you know, two to three, maybe four hours on your skin and base notes can go eight, nine, 10 plus hours on the skin. So I like to pick one to two key players per evaporation curve. And while I'm doing this, I kind of visualize in my head, I, I kind of have like these little scent bubbles in my head ranging from top, middle to base. And what I mean by that is like, look at this basic chart that I just made. So in this chart is kind of like a basic visualization that I would usually do and pick out some of the key players of the fragrance that I'm going to be working on. Now this particular chart shows just some random, you know, random notes basically. I mean, yours can look and have whatever you want in it obviously. But this is a good idea of like, who are my key players? Obviously the key players are gonna be the bigger, the larger circles. These are the bigger scent bubbles. These are the ones that are gonna really impact and hit your nose uh, and pretty much dictate the overall theme of the fragrance, the overall composition smell as a whole. So while you're doing this, uh, you're obviously gonna visualize some of the, the larger key players but also keep in mind some of the smaller key players as well, and we'll talk about that next. So the next part now is you've got your main key players, one to two per evaporation curve in your head, in your mind. You wanna grab those, either essential oils, your absolutes, your aroma chemicals, and now you're gonna start blending just the key players first. 
you want to get those into balance first because if you start to grab everything including the kitchen sink in your arsenal and you just start blending you're not going to get anywhere you're you're probably just going to get more frustrated because the more you add the the worse it smells and you don't know what's going wrong and it's even harder to backtrack because you've added in so much crap so Stick to your basics, the one to two key players in each evaporation curve first. Get those married, get those in balance first. Because once those are in balance, the next step becomes a lot easier. So step number four is once you have all your key players blended in place and they smell to what you would consider imbalance. Now, of course, when you're smelling this at this stage, you're probably like, well, this doesn't smell anything like my intended fragrance that I was going for. And that's okay because you're not finished yet. You're just getting the key players in place first. You want to get those in balance and get those married first. So everything's linear, everything smells smooth uh, and in conjunction with each other. So now at this point, once you've got that in place, now step four is you can add in your modifiers, your blenders, your fillers. And these are some of the small scale, some of the non-essential key players is what I like to think of, uh, of them as. And that could be uh, a perfect example is if you have a floral as a key player, let's say rose. Uh, rose on its own is a very light, delicate, fresh uh, smelling flower. Um, now, if you're working on a fragrance that you intended to be something a little bit more spicy and warm, you can now modify that rose by adding in some like isoeugenol, maybe some cinnamon, uh, maybe some spices to give it a more spicy facet to it. But at this stage, because you have all your key players in balance, you don't want to disrupt that balance by adding in too much of the, men, uh, the blenders, modifiers, uh, or fillers. So at this point, you're going to add in things in small amounts and you're going to notice that when you start building fragrances uh, throughout you know your lifetime you're going to have your key players which have larger percentages that encompass the overall you know your concentrate and then you're going to have all these little small players that are maybe in small percentages like maybe one percent of this ingredient maybe 0.10 or something of this ingredient or maybe just small like 2.3 percent so they're going to be smaller things that are tucked underneath your key players that kind of fill in the gaps because um, you'll notice probably when you smell just your key players in balance of course there's going to be some gaps missing you're going to be like this doesn't feel complete it feels a little choppy well yes it's linear and kind of in balance it's still missing things and that's the step four is when you start to add in all these minor little modifiers and fillers in there. So on to step five, and this is the last step. Um, when you've got your key players blended, you've got your modifiers in place. Now it's about obviously testing your fragrance to see if it matches your theme and the profile that you're, you're shooting for. But now it's kind of like you want to make sure an overall uh, kind of like an odor profile is in place. And what I mean by odor profile, at this stage, usually I have uh, everything mixed in a beaker. I, I dilute it down to like maybe a, a ADP or an EDT concentration. I'll put it in a small vial and I'll test it on my skin. While I'm smelling it, I'll sit there and I'll kind of close my eyes and visualize a chart. And this chart to me kind of looks like the same chart that you would see like in an equalization or an EQ graph when you're listening to music. Uh, Cause some, sometimes EQs, you can turn up the bass, the mids or the treble. And sometimes you can visualize like a, a parametric EQ graph. And for me, a scent profile really isn't that much different because you're looking at, well, in music, you're looking at bass, middle and treble. In, perfumery you're still looking at base middle or what they call the heart and the top so what you want to now do is kind of as you're smelling your blend you want to visualize in your head what does this graph or this kind of eat this uh this odor curve profile kind of look like in your mind based off of what you're smelling now i'll show you a couple charts so this first chart obviously looks like it's pretty heavy in the base notes um, it kind of gradually goes down into the mid and then slopes even further downward into the top notes. Now this necessarily isn't a bad looking odor profile curve. This just means that obviously you went a little bass heavy 
um, and a little bit lighter in the mids and the top. And that's okay because as long as the overall odor profile matches the theme, because maybe if this was intended for like a wall, uh, 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 a winter or a fall fragrance, this curve could be okay because pri primarily those fragrances are going to be base heavy. They're going to be warmer, they're going to be thicker, and you're going to find all, the, all those odor profiles in mostly base to mid notes and a little bit less in the top. Now, the key thing is though, you want to look for a smooth curve. So in this next photograph, I mean, you can see this curve looks a little choppy. This could, be, this could have been something that maybe I tried to blend for like a springtime fragrance and I wanted it to be zesty with grapefruit, bright and invigor invigorating in the top and a little bit, you know, less base notes. It's not gonna be as thick, it's not gonna be as cloying because it's intended for, you know, high heat weather. And you can kind of see that that gradual slope upward is kind of in the right direction of the theme that I was going for and the scent odor profile, but it looks a little choppy. You can see there's a little humps, a little po a couple pockets, a couple dips here and there where maybe I kind of struggled filling in the correct modifiers, the blenders and the fillers to kind of even out those gaps to get everything more unif uh, uniform uh, in the evaporation curve overall. And so obviously like this next curve is something that's pretty linear. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It's linear all the way across. It's a great linear smooth curve. And that could be something that you're aiming for or maybe not. So when you visualize these curves, there is no right or wrong curve to shoot for. Not one curve is gonna fit every single, you know, situation or theme or, or fragrance profile. These are more tips and tricks that I've kind of learned along the way that help me not only visualize, but kind of concept the, the fragrance based on what I'm smelling and based on what I can kind of picture in my mind. How would that look to make it look linear and also smell linear? So when I'm smelling it, I can kind of visualize in my head, okay, I, I'm not picking up any of the spice that I added. There's probably a small little pocket here that's, that I'm missing, so I should probably add in some spice because I, that's what I intended, but I don't smell it. Or maybe I'm missing out on some pineapple or something because I get a ton of bergamot and then it jumps straight into jasmine, but I'm missing a pocket what was supposed to be pineapple, but I'm not getting it, so my curve is a little choppy here. And, and you're not making these graphs, you're not writing them down, you're just visualizing in your head as you're smelling it because you want a smooth transition, you want a smooth evaporation curve from top, middle to base. And that's the whole point of all of this, is to put a concept in place, get a theme in place, put a, an attack plan in place, but as you're blending, kind of know what you're doing. Kind of, you know, take a step back and take things in, in steps, in, in progressions. Don't just jump in and just throw everything in there. Um, if you take it in steps, it's easier to backtrack and figure out what went wrong, if something went wrong. So with all that being said, I, I kind of hope this uh, video kind of helped you out if you're just starting to, you know, make your first fragrances and whatnot. Um, now again, Everything that I say, there is no one size fits all when it comes to perfumery. At the, at the end of the day, use you know the tools and the knowledge that you want to use. If you have a specific concept or way that you want to build your perfume, then do it your way. That's fine. Whatever works best for you. These are just some of the things that help me uh, progress to the next level and, and do so in a, in a pretty rapid pace, actually. So it's helped me quite a bit. So I'm, ho I'm hoping it helps me and it's going to help you. So that's it with this perfumery basics video. So with that being said, until next time.